In this tutorial, we're going to cover basic drawing commands in Guide. Guide being a visual programming language, one of the first things you'll have to learn is how to write, or more precisely, draw your code. For those of you that have used another visual language, like function block diagrams, this might be more familiar. For those that only have experience with text-based languages, like C or Java, the learning curve might be a little steeper. But once you're familiar with the drawing commands, the visual nature of Guide is one of its principal advantages. One can get an idea of the data flows within the program at a glance, even without extensive experience in Guide. Well, let's get started with drawing code in Guide. When you look at a Guide program, you'll see a number of Guide elements. Primarily, you have components and pages, where calculations are done, connected by wires and buses, which transmit signal or variable values. We'll start by looking at those wires and buses. Wires, which are drawn in green, represent individual signal or variable values. Something like the voltage on an input pin, the frequency on a pin, or the rotational speed of a wheel. Buses, in red, are collections of individual signal values or wires, and subbuses, which can themselves contain any number of wires and subbuses, and so forth and so on. Wires and buses allow you to pass values in your program. To draw wires and buses, which is to say to pass values around in your program, you have to be in route mode. In guide, you're always in some mode or state. You'll see the mode you are in at the bottom of the guide window. Some of the other modes are Move, Query, Delete, and others. To draw wires or buses, we want to be in Route Mode, which we enter with the keyboard shortcut of R. When we change the mode, you'll see it displayed at the bottom of your guide window. Frequently, you'll be connecting wires between components. For example, taking the values from two constant components and sending them to an Add component. We're taking the outputs from an add component and feeding it to a multiply component. To do this, once again, you first need to be in route mode, which you enter by pressing R. Then either click directly on the source pin, or put a box around the pin. Then once again, click on the destination pin, or put a box around it. Sometimes, instead of connecting from one component to another, you want to leave a wire dangling, because you're going to connect it to something later. To leave a wire dangling, draw the part of the wire you want, and then press F9. If you hit Escape, it will completely abandon the route you've been drawing, with one exception, which I'll mention later. We said that you use route mode to draw either wires or buses. If you click somewhere to start drawing a wire or bus, it will either 1. Start drawing whatever you drew last. For instance, if you last drew a wire, it will start drawing a wire again. 2. If there's only one possibility, it will start using that. For instance, a minute ago we connected two components. When we clicked on the component pin, we didn't have to tell Guide to start drawing a wire because you can only connect a wire, not a bus, to a component. And three, if you click on an existing wire or bus, it will adopt whatever type you started with and extend it. If I start drawing either a wire or a bus, and I want to flip to the other one, the command for this is K. This is assuming, of course, that it is allowed. For instance, if I start it on a component pin, and then I hit K, it will do nothing because, as I said earlier, you can't connect a bus to a component pin.
Another useful routing command is S. Type S while drawing your route if you want to keep things clean and orderly by only drawing horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines. This is especially helpful when connecting a wire to a bus or one bus to another when making a subbus. The reason for this is that we generally recommend that when connecting a wire or a subbus to a bus, that you make a 45 degree angle right before connecting the wire or bus. We recommend this for two reasons. First, it makes the wire or bus name easier to read. And the second reason is that, if followed consistently, it provides a quick visual clue to what is happening in your program. One of the advantages of a visual programming language like Guide is that you get accustomed to seeing what is happening in your code at a glance without having to analyze it. If you follow this convention, every time you see a diagonal connection, you'll know instinctively that there's a subbus there, whereas if you see a 90 degree connection, you'll know it's an extension of the same bus or wire. So if you're paying attention to the part above, you'll know that in order to create a subbus, you have to start away from the existing bus, because if your first click is on the existing bus, then you can't do anything but extend it. So to create a subbus, start off the bus you want to connect to and begin drawing your bus. Once you've reached the place where you want to connect, make your 40 45 degree jog and connect to the target bus. You will see a following pop-up dialog, and now you can either select an existing subbus or create a new one by giving it a name, and there are several proposed for you on the right-hand side based on existing subbus names. If you changed your mind at this point and decided to connect to the top level bus, you can do this by either clicking Escape or Cancel. This is the exception to the rule for Escape that I mentioned earlier. Once you've clicked on the bus, you're committed to either connecting to or creating a new subbus or extending the existing top level bus. If you wanted to remove the bus you've drawn, you'd then have to either do Undo or Delete it. This brings us to our next two drawing commands, the ever-important undo and delete. Undo is bound to F10 by default, and you can undo up to the last 10 actions by pressing F10. Delete is another mode, like route was. Enter delete mode by clicking on the delete key, not D, but the delete key. You'll see the mode change at the bottom of your guide window. Now just put a box around the objects that you want to delete. Note that if you select multiple types of objects for delete, you'll get a pop-up dialog. You can delete all of them or a subset by clicking on those you want to delete. You can add new components to your program by dragging them in from the tabs on the right component, function, hardware, and my code. Place as many of the objects as you like, and then hit Escape to return to the mode that we were in previously. Another essential mode is Query or Change Mode. You enter Query Mode by pressing Q. Use Query when you want to change any aspect of an object in your guide program. As an example, let's say we've got a typed constant in our program. That object has a number of aspects to it. Primarily, it has a data type and a value. Query allows us to change those aspects. Type Q for Query Mode and then select the object, which will bring up a pop-up dialog where we can modify the component. 
Notice that we can also change the component itself into a similar component, for instance from a greater than comparison to a greater than or equal comparison. Although this isn't changing the component, notice that you can also get help on the functioning of a component in the query dialog by clicking on the question mark. This can be especially helpful for new users of Guide. As another example, let's look at pages, which you know are critical for organizing code in Guide. Querying a page is how you change its name, change its namespace, lock pages, or any other aspect of a page. Typing C puts us in copy mode, which is used for copying one or multiple elements within a page. To copy between pages or between projects, you'll need to use the Control C and Control V commands. Control C works a little differently than what you might be used to. Normally, you select the objects you want and then type Control C to copy them. In Guide, it's the opposite. You type Control C, then put a box around what you want to copy. Typing M puts us in Move mode, and likewise S puts us in Stretch mode. They are very similar and allow you to reposition elements on your drawing area. The difference between them is that Move will move all of any object of which you've selected even a part, whereas Stretch will leave the unselected parts of the object anchored. While you're moving an element, or while you're placing new elements, you can flip them horizontally with F8. You can do this with bus and signal names also. Select the port in Move mode, and then flip it with F8. While not explicitly a drawing command, you have to be able to move your viewing window and guide to see what you've created so far, or to move to another section to begin drawing again. You have a couple of options to do this. If you've selected Pan with Hand, you can right-click on any place in your code and slide it around like you would with your finger on a tablet. This is the most intuitive option and usually easiest for beginners. If you haven't selected Pan with Hand, Right-clicking anywhere in the code will cause that point to be centered in the drawing area. You'll also need to zoom in to make connections easier, and zoom out to get an overview of your code. This can be accomplished in a number of ways. Probably the two easiest are using the mouse scroll wheel, if you're using a mouse, or page up and page down otherwise. Home is also useful in that it centers the drawing in your viewing area so you get a bird's eye view of your code. Remember that entering and leaving a page is done with E and L respectively. If you haven't already watched the video on page interfaces, as I mentioned earlier, that would be a good one to watch after this. Another important command to know for beginners to guide is how to insert text. You can do this by selecting the Add menu then text. Like everything in your code, you can change your text afterwards by doing a query on it. Adding text to your program may not qualify as a drawing command, because like for comments and text-based programming languages, Guide ignores them. They're crucial, however, for making your code understandable for future readers, be it yourself or a colleague. With that in mind, we'll mention a few other style pointers to keep in mind as you're writing your guide program. Always remember to give your pages, buses, and signals meaningful names. If you have a bus that contains machine geometry, one signal of which is front wheel circumference, give it those names, rather than signal value X on bus bus 1, which will mean nothing to anyone, including yourself, six months from now. Lastly, 
Remember that liberal use of pages to break your code into manageable, understandable chunks will make it easier to read and debug. Remember to watch the page interface video to learn more about how pages are used if you haven't already done so. If you want more in-depth programming tips, check the development guidelines document which is installed with guide. You'll find it in the Windows Start menu under Danfoss with a number of other plus one reference documents. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at plusonehelpdesk at danfoss.com P-L-U-S, the plus sign, the digit one, helpdesk at danfoss.com Thank you for your attention.